risk the entire herd to protect one of their own. Do we share more with these great creatures than we realize? Follow the last free-roaming African elephants in Reflections on Elephants, a new National Geographic special. Elephants as you've never seen them before. Coming up next. From the fall. Like the giant sea monsters that once stalked the ocean floors, an unlikely creature still roams the earth. So much like the treasured whales of the seas, elephants are the precious last remnants of the largest land animals in the world. Even a gigantic bull will play away the day, wallowing in the coolness of a life that ambles along at its own pace. A life as long as our own, but with so much more time. Time to be simply what they are. But this sense of calm and meditation can be deceptive. For a whole year, one small herd races against time and the drying water holes. Often the battle over the precious water enrages them. Two tiny calves are caught up in this struggle, coaxed through their early years that are fraught with dangers. As large as they are, elephants are sensitive and gentle creatures, haunting discoveries of burial rituals, language, and understanding suggest intelligence and even emotions. These are the last of a dying race. Watching them, we can reflect, not only on their complex behavior, but on our own as well. Join us for a few more world, ourselves, and our future. This program is made possible by the people of Chevron. Chevron, giving thought to television. Additional funding for this program was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by annual financial support from viewers like you. Africa seldom relaxes. It always seems to be waiting for the gentler moments to pass. Around rainwater pools strewn across the dry country of Botswana, doves and sand grouse stir up the air in a frenzy to drink before the soft edges of the day burn up. Elephants are a symbol of the African wilderness, woven into its fabric like the blade of a bone. Outrage runs like wildfire among the herds, sparking explosions of aggression. But the buffalo keep pouring out of the forest, and dust hangs like smoke on a battlefield. The contest is finally resolved, and as the dust settles, the buffalo disperse. Somewhere in the confusion, a young buffalo was struck heavily in the head and side. The calf is doomed, injured beyond hope. The two calves move off with the herd having avoided a muddy death themselves. The young buffalo's broken body is left behind.
It causes some concern to the departing elephants, suggesting an awareness of injury and death, even of other species. Like huge cathedrals or ancient monoliths, the solid shapes block out the sun. A long way from the congregating female herds, the bulls gently sway to a rhythmic dance of the giants, a shuffle of constant adjustment in a display of dominance and submission. One of these bulls has a rank. Each responds to the next one. Every newcomer to the gathering provokes a reaction that flashes through the memories of all the contestants. Anyone unsure of his status soon learns the rules of this tournament of giants. Status is determined by body size or age. Tusks have little to do with it. The contest is for water, as usual. In a classic bull area like Sabuti, up to 200 elephants compete for this one resource. In this melee, they must constantly be aware of who is around. A sensitive tail is an advantage. Heads used like huge medieval maces, bodies jostle and tusks joust for the precious liquid. This struggle may seem like a chaotic free-for-all, but with each changing combination, the field plan of the hierarchy is reset in a surprisingly orderly fashion. One ghostly form is excluded from the commotion. His gaunt features and sagging skin are sure signs of his age and fading energy for life. With his last set of grinding teeth nearly worn away, his days are numbered. Too weak to join in, he can only watch the competing bulls and wait. By dusk, his body cries out for the moisture leached from it by the heat. He can no longer resist, and with fewer bulls around the water, he makes his move. Drawing himself up to his full height, he forces himself into the circle. At last, When a mud-covered dominant bull returns, the ghostly elephant should retreat. But the water still beckons him. It is a mistake. Jack
jagged tusk slices through the old skin into his neck. The old bull goes down with barely a struggle, losing blood fast. Even before the old bull dies, a young male carries out a bizarre mock mating display. This behavior can only be explained as an attempt to upgrade his own status with this show of domination. The old bull dies quickly and silently in the night, though his fate was long since determined. Companions defend the carcass against the hyenas, a useless endeavor. His body must continue its usefulness to Africa, even after his death. Like an ancient burial ritual, attention is paid to every detail. Is it a macabre fascination with the dead? Or perhaps a tribute to a fallen companion? And why is the ivory so often the focus of these haunting examinations? As a week passes, the carcass gradually relinquishes its form. There is no mythological elephant graveyard, no common place where bones and tusks are taken, just the eventual scatterings in the dust. As the last scavengers squabble over the scraps of the body, a few bulls remain, perhaps still nurturing a special bond with the old elephant. understand his ways and the ways of his species, the bull's spirit floats away. Eight days, and what was once a giant of the world is no more than just a memory, just a reflection of a time when elephants roamed Africa from sea to sea and ruled the continent. Once again, the clans are gathering, marching for the rivers. Paths interlace, leaving behind a swath of flattened vegetation. This constant ebb and flow of bodies affects some areas while resting others a balance that is forever changing. The females head for the best feeding and good water, not only for the living, but for their unborn as well.
final miles are covered on the run toward the rivers. Here, the matriarch and her calves will see out the next three months of the dry season. Even in this chaotic clamor for water, the elephants show a sensitivity and awareness of who is around them and where their other clan families are. After a grueling six months, the calves, possibly sensing that their constant march is over, take on a new playfulness and relax. But now, when the oppressive heat stings their dark bodies, they can hide from its burning fingers. Gradually, the elephants drop down like weary puppets at the end of a show, both young and old drifting into a rare sleepiness. They seldom allow themselves to sleep for long. Just a few minutes at a time are needed by animals with such long, slow lives. will the matriarch lead them out of the shade, always keeping the herd together. But sometimes things go wrong. Occasionally calves are left behind and wander around lost, testing each herd they approach. When he sees the matriarch and goes to greet the herd, this young male is turned away. His best chance of being found is to keep searching. Despite their good communication, these separations are inevitable. Newborn calves have begun to displace the older ones. Unbeknown to him, his real family is across the plain, heading into the forest. Suddenly, he finds himself among lions. Before he can turn, the juvenile is locked in a deadly game. But this time, innocence is matched by inexperience. The lions are young and seem more intent on experimenting than killing.
Lions often prey on the weak, but this calf is lost, not ailing. A determined opponent with a thick hide, not easy to penetrate. But soon he tires, and the lions close in for the kill. Quite suddenly, the experiment is over. The lions are exhausted and lose interest. The calf responds, surprising the lions with his new zest for life. As they watch, he slips away. What emotions elephants feel during these struggles, we do not know. That they do feel something is quite apparent. Back in the bull area, when old bones have all but turned to dust, the mud relinquishes a precious last reminder of the old bull at the water hole. Like a trophy, it is carried into the open, displayed and fondled. Like a memory, it is tasted and nurtured. haunting behavior is difficult to understand. How can we ever know what elephants feel and what form these emotions take? A mystery forever. When they attempt to destroy ivory by smashing it against rocks or try to crush tusks by standing on them, are they displaying a new behavior, a solemn response to the atrocities of our time? Or is this an ancient ritual? And if so, what does it mean? At the river, the matriarch leads her herd on a final push for better feeding on the north bank. Swimming is little problem for elephants. They share an ancestry with seagoing mammals like dugongs and manatees. Large, vacant nasal and sinus cavities keep their heavy heads afloat, and their fat makes them buoyant. On the south bank, a timid young bull refuses to swim and watches the herd disappear. By now, the young bull has given up all attempts at swimming. The herd's ancient knowledge has betrayed them this time. But when they finally emerge on the north bank, they have crossed into another country, Namibia.
The stranded young bull still calls to them in alarm. The herd is now fair game for hunters, poachers, and traders. And the wave of communication flashes back and forth across the river. Then, reacting as one, they plunge into the water to swim back to the young bull. Although by now the exhausted young calves are at risk of drowning in the strong current, the fatal conflict with man has been avoided. On the south bank, greetings and urgent reassurances flood from the herd, but he will not be persuaded. The herd gives up and remains on the familiar and safer soils of Botswana, the end of the restless journey for the matriarch and her calves for this year. This may be the last generation of elephants to traverse these ancestral ranges, the last truly free elephants. As we succeed more and more as a species, they seem to slip further and further from our reach. It has been said that we could do worse than mold our own lives on those of elephants. Lives filled with dignity and gentle bearing and time. Perhaps we need more time to understand those gentle celebrations of life and death that are like silent whispers in the moonlight. More time for reflections on elephants. To better understand our world, ourselves, and our future, this program is made possible by the people of Chevron. Chevron, giving thought to television. Additional funding for this program was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by annual financial support from viewers like you. In a few moments, we'll travel to Texas, where football is not only a sport, but a religion, followed with evangelical fervor. And we'll compare the marketing strategies of several professional sports. Stay tuned for The Coach, Fields of Blood, and That's Entertainment, next on Power Plays.